Yasa, Ziggy here and welcome to the finance segment Money Does Grow on Trees on GRTV. On the show we cover all things money and we welcome your email questions. The question that's selected to be covered on the show will receive a free copy of my book Money Does Grow on Trees. Now today is part two of our discussion on estate planning but if you missed part one here is a quick summary. In that part, we wanted to know exactly what is meant by the term estate planning. And in that context, we spoke about wills and powers of attorney. We were also able to identify which assets are not included in your will. So go to my website if you missed that show. Today, we're going to consider two challenging issues when it comes to estate planning. Firstly, estate planning for blended families. And secondly, potential challenges to a will. But before we do that, let's first consider what is an executor and what is their role? The executor of your estate is the person who executes the instructions in your will. The role is one of trust as well as one that comes with great responsibility. Now this means your decision needs to take into account your executor's abilities and probably needs to be someone with some sort of expertise. Now if the estate is complex with various ownership arrangements, then it would make sense to appoint someone with proven business and accounting skills. Alternatively, if it's a simple estate, then perhaps a good friend may be appropriate. Now a good executor will ideally be someone who is willing and able to undertake the role and is likely to survive the testator. Other factors would include now, geographical closeness, knowledge of the type of assets that are within the estate, someone who has honesty and a high level of integrity, and certainly someone who is impartial when it comes to the different beneficiaries. Also someone with some knowledge and the willingness to seek expert advice when needed is helpful. Now remember at the beginning I said there are two major challenges in estate planning, so let's look at these now. The first challenge relates to estate planning for blended families. Now demographic trends such as divorce rates, second marriages and relationship trends have seen an increase in the number of an alternative family structures such as step and blended families. Now whilst the term blended family may invoke images of a wine and roses Brady Bunch, real life is often far more complex and challenging. The reality is these can create some significant estate planning issues for clients. Now financial advisors and other advice providers who work with blended families really need to be aware of the estate planning issues that can arise, as well as the practical strategies that may be employed to help ease or even prevent potential difficulties. If you have a blended family, understand that you need a new mindset to deal with issues and you need an advisor with experience in this area. Ask the simple question of your advisor, have you dealt with the situation before? And what are the issues that I need to consider? Now the second challenge relates to potential challenges to a will. Each state and territory in Australia has implemented laws that enable people to contest wills. If someone feels they have a legitimate expectation of consideration by the testator, that's you, to challenge the will and have been left out of the will or were not adequately provided for, then they have a right to contest. It is essential you demonstrate that you have considered all your spouses, children and other family members as well as close friends and other potential dependents in making your provisions of the will. There are many ways to achieve this such as establishing a detailed memorandum which effectively means that if a will is challenged, the deceased can still have their say in court and state the reasons why their decisions were made. Now needless to say, if you believe there might be a possibility of a challenge to the will, it is best to try and defuse this early in the estate planning process while you're still alive. Another complication might arise as a result of multiple marriages, stepchildren and unbalanced distribution of assets. Now if you want to favour one child over the other, once again a letter could be written into the estate plan that explains the reasons why the decision was made. Okay. So who can challenge a will? Well, the following people are generally able to challenge a will in Australia's states and territories. Of course, depending on the law applicable in that jurisdiction. A spouse of the deceased, a former spouse of the deceased, children of the deceased, a person who is divorced from the deceased but who at the time of death is entitled to receive maintenance from the deceased, a person who at any time was dependent on the deceased, including a member of the same household as the deceased or dependents who lived in the same household as the deceased. 
or confusing? Of course it is. The fact that a person is able to bring a challenge against a will does not mean they will win such a challenge. In fact, the court must take into consideration the moral obligation of the deceased to provide for all the beneficiaries under the will. In other words, the court will try to decide what is fair from the facts that are presented to it. Now, if a challenge is successful, the court has the power to change how the estate will be distributed. Whether a claim is successful or not, it is the estate that will generally pay the legal costs, and so you really don't want the estate eroded by all the costs involved with the challenge. The point here is to think it all through now while you all have your marbles, while you're alive and while you can have an impact on the outcome. Ultimately, it's the estate itself that may reduce in value because people are fighting each other. Lawyers generally only get involved because someone has died and not thought about the estate planning issues for themselves, their children, their spouse, or issues pertaining to any potential claim by an ex-spouse or a former spouse. Sure, it's not a cheerful exercise to look at all your estate planning needs, but it is better than giving lawyers truckloads of your hard-earned money. So what action needs to be taken after death? Well, when a person dies with their will in place, the main estate planning duties rest with the executor who is nominated in the will. Now essentially the executor's role is to carry out duties in accordance with the will and any relevant laws that may apply. And of course this includes locating the will, determining the assets of the estate, paying out any debts, distributing assets to beneficiaries who are named in the will, managing assets such as trust and property for a period of time, this might involve attending shareholder or body corporate meetings for property assets held, possibly holding assets for a period of time, example for children until they reach adulthood, or paying for the funeral. Well, that's the end of the segment, but before we go, here is this week's funny finance phrase. If you think no one cares about you, try missing a couple of loan repayments. Now remember to email your questions in, and if your question is covered on the show, I'll send you a free copy of my book, Money Does Grow on Trees. On behalf of GRTV, I'm Ziggy, and remember, money does grow on trees, yassas.